Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast Seas Get Degrees. I'm your co-host Chad. Sit back and relax. This week's guest has a phenomenal story. So sit back, relax, grab a coffee, grab a cup of water, enjoy the show. Have a great day. My volume's up. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's like when you said that, my whole ear just went poof. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like deafen you. Oh, you're good. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be awake. I'm actually awake. I've been up since seven, but for some odd reason, my body just keeps. It doesn't want to like you know you get those gears and you want to kick the next one, and get all super excited. I'm not quite there yet. I know. I know. It's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, hey. Speaking of this, before we get going, I actually got baptized yesterday, so we're all good to go. It was awesome. Congrats. How was it? Where was it? Uh, I'm from, well, I'm from Appleton, but I live in Green Bay. So okay, cool. So this is actually, I don't want to use the term born again. I was when I was little, just like everybody, but. It was actually awesome. I have a super cool pastor up here, so it's uh, uh-huh. it's it's I don't know. You've heard of Life Church, right? Like yes, Craig Rochelle. So I don't know if this is a satellite church of it, um, mm-hmm. but it, it's Life Church Green Bay. So it's kind of under that same umbrella. But, okay. Um. But, so where did you go? Was it like? Did you do it in the church, or did you do it, like, by a body of water? You really want to know the honest answer? We were downtown Green Bay next to this big mural, mm-hmm. and uh, it was, I'm going to call it a cow. I have an agriculture background, so it's a, it was a cow duck tank, uh, cow water tank, and he all painted the sides up saying it's all in, and then it actually blended with the mural in the background, so, like, you have a picture. Uh, and, so that's uh, cool. It was amazing. Here, I'll uh, I'll shoot you the picture over quick through Facebook. Just blow it up to show you the. I can find it. Keep talking for two seconds. I'm a dig for it. Yeah, no, you're fine. I'm just excited to see it because you know I was baptized last year, um, around like September-ish, and I got baptized like in the salt water, and it so it was like. It was so cool. Like, it was just so cool. It's such a cool experience. So I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm talking to you like the day after your baptism. That must be something. There has to be something awesome about that, you know? You know, and I don't want to use the term weird fear. It, it feels great. Um, I was actually more anxious about it. Okay, let me see if I can get the regular one here. Um, because, let's get the, let's see the front of the tank. All right, cool. We have the front of the tank. All right. I'm going to send you two over. Hold on here. Okay. Um, where are we at here? I have the video, but this is going to be the best way of seeing it. So it's been a long time coming, honestly. Uh, we were supposed to have it back in May, and obviously, mm-hmm. you know what yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. Good old so, COVID. Yeah. So, like, uh, I don't know where you're at, but in Green Bay, they're kind of – they're more – protective we'll just use that term it's uh they sway more one side versus the other side so so green bay was pretty shut down for a lot of things so yeah um so yeah no they opened up downtown location which is they call it unchurch but it's obviously we have the we have the normal church sunday morning um we we can't have it open because obviously there's like three thousand people that go to it so they do yeah. the vi- they do the video services and then Sunday night is it's how Pastor Scott actually says it straight out. It's more of the he's like I want this set up kind of like how Apostle Paul's set up. He's like it's just little tiny yeah. groups where you go through lessons and then you talk about yeah. it and it's more gathering. So yeah. uh, set Sunday night's more gathering versus like the traditional preaching and sure. yeah. How, you know what I miss? I miss the music. Where you walk up to the building and the building just is shaking, and then you you go in there, it's just boom, boom, boom. It's like, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I that's know. what I miss. You know, I miss so. it too because I'm in the Bahamas actually, and we are just as protective. Yeah, like our prime minister is actually supposed to have a meeting tonight, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna tell us, guys. I know you're already locked down, but I'm gonna like super lock you down. So like right now we can move about and we have a curfew and stuff. And I'm sure he's going to say, okay, we're back to only going to the grocery store and the pharmacy. Have a great life. So I totally get it. Yeah. And we're and doing virtual church now too. Um, so, which island are you on? I'm in Staniel Key. The island is like this big. Our population is a grand total of a hundred. So. Okay. And then yeah. how, like how close are you to NASA and all? Um, 30 minute flight. 30 minute flight to Nassau. I'm really close to Georgetown, Exuma, if you're familiar with that. And then fun fact, I went to high school in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, no, I my I think my mom been to Freeport, but I haven't been, to be weird, I've been to Texas, I've been to Florida, I've been to Key West. Mm -hmm. I haven't been on the Bahamas for some odd reason. I haven't went were, that direction. When you, Key West, when you were in Key West, you could have literally jumped here. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I honestly, and you know how that whole corridor is from like Key Largo all the way down. I mm -hmm. actually loved, we never stayed in the, the early keys and I'm going to say early, yeah. keys, but like the first few islands, I wish I would have yeah. stayed because I loved like duck Island, all those like first three. Yeah. Four ones. It's so yeah. pretty. And Key West is Key West. My, my father, real father actually is a huge Buffett fan. So like Key West has uh -huh. a, big thing in a side but I don't know I had fun but I didn't have fun at Key West like I, I would have had I had a lot more fun being on inland like Orlando yeah. Tampa Miami like that whole corridor so yeah uh, but no um this is actually honestly it's Monday morning actually for me I think it's afternoon for you now yeah Monday afternoon for me Early is, Early. Yeah, you're an hour ahead of me, aren't you? Or two? Yeah, an hour. All right, sweet. Um, this is just to kind of kick her back, relax. I'm pretty low-key. I'm going to try not to swear. I do slide some out on accidentally. I'm a Christian. I get it. <laughs> you're fine. Um, but, um, no, it's mainly, obviously, I have four or five things on my side of it, and I mean, I went through your YouTube page and I, I kind of got punched in the chest a little bit on your, on some of your videos. You're like, come on, get more open, get more open. Um, but it, chest. It, it's just, it woke me up a little bit. So, um, versus, well, it's, I've been on both sides of it. I've lived in the country. I've lived in the yeah. city and yeah. I'm kind of that neutral person where it's like, I, I don't like to stir the pot. I just kind of like mm -hmm. to be a hundred percent honest. I rather as a Christian, you, you take care of yourself first, make yourself happy so you can give happy. Yeah. So like my main focus yeah. is right there, right in the middle. Yeah. Of stuff. yeah. And non-selfish way of saying it, not, you know, self-centered or anything. It just, yeah. I have to make yeah. sure I wake up smiling first versus everything else. So, um, that's I'm why, man. yeah. So that's, that's the reason why I like when I watched it, I'm like, Oh man, we're kind of doing it all different here. <laughs> Um, but, but I don't want it to be a punch in the chest, though. Well, it's it's a good opposite perspective because mm -hmm. obviously, I mean, I'm Midwestern boy, so it's uh, it's a little bit different in certain areas that versus mm -hmm. in Chicago or like the inner city side of it. So, sure. um, but yeah, no, like I walk neutral. But yeah, when you're like, hey, ally, it's like, okay, I need to do my research. <laughs> But, um, okay. no problem. Uh, like I said, I'm going to, it's going to be cool, fun, relax. I, all I have is four questions. Cause I know, right. it, you know, with zoom, we have 45 minutes at most. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically just come on up and explain who you are. Like I said, I'm going to be, I have rock and roll music going at the beginning. So like it's, I'm an upbeat type. So if you want to get all punchy and, and bouncy and all that, I have zero, you know, let her rip. I don't care. Okay, cool. Um, good. But I'm going to just say, Hey, welcome to C's Good Degrees. I am Chad, your co-host. Welcome. Welcome. Tell everyone who you are. 
Well, hi everyone. Hope you're having a good day so far. This is Natasia coming to you from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. And looking forward to chatting with Chad, the chat with Chad. Chat with Chad, I love it. <laughs> well, uh, you guys, uh, this is Natasia. Obviously, she's uh, the co, I don't want to say co director, you're the full opera, uh, owner of uh, Mindful Travel. I'm the owner, operator, founder, and mama of Mind Pro Travel. The big mama. Oh, awesome. The big mama of Mind Pro Travel, for sure. <laughs> hey, you want to tell everyone, explain to everyone why you either created it or vice versa, why this has such great passion for you? Awesome. So basically, well, Mind Pro Travel is an organization that's all about promoting humanity through cultural awareness. That is what I live. That is what I breathe. That is what I love. And, you know, with the current climate, I'm doing that through anti-racism practices, anti-racism coaching, anti-racism workshops, because, you know, there's been a lot of stuff going on these days. Um, so I've just been trying to not hit everybody over the head because, you know, you see some Instagram people and all these people like, rawr, rawr, coming down your throat. But I believe fully in empathy and I believe fully in compassion. And I think that that goes both ways. And I also think that you're never going to get a good result from someone if you put them in a place where they feel like they have to be defensive. So, so yeah, that's where it comes from. It just, it comes from a place of a passion for culture, first of all because I lived in Dubai for three years. And while I was in Dubai, I had an opportunity to really indulge in culture at a different level. So not only Middle Eastern culture, also like, you know, my best friend is from Gambia and I have friends from Germany, Ukraine, like you name it, they, have, they live in Dubai. So seeing their different cultures and then comparing what I see and what I experience with the stereotypes that I thought before I met people from these countries, I was like, oh my God, these people are like so much more than the stereotypes that, you know, that I've been told. So I don't want, so the anti-racism is not just about, you know, people think about black and white, obviously, but there's like Middle Eastern and there's so many other things that I just want to share with the world to make sure that people, people are, are knowledgeable about people beyond the surface of stereotypes, basically, in a nutshell. That's a whole lot. So, how, <laughs> so, and I'm going to keep digging on this Dubai thing, but besides, obviously, what brought you there? Mm, what brought me to Dubai was pretty much a, a love of travel and a love of culture. I am like a travel junkie. So, obviously, COVID-19 has me like scratching right now because I really want to get out. But, you know, I, I'm sure there's other people that are listening that feel the same way. Um, but what, what took me to Dubai was just like I said, a love for culture and also being um, not able to work in the U.S. anymore. So fun fact, I worked in the U.S. for a year after I got my undergrad in Miami at Barry University, go Bucks, And then I got my master's at Georgia Southern. And then after you get your master's as an international student, I think I mentioned I'm from the Bahamas. So you get one year to work. And I worked for that one year, and as the year was the ending, I was like, no, I don't want to go back to the Bahamas yet. I want to see the world more. So I put in applications to, like, everywhere, like, literally thousands of applications, and I got, like, reject, 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 until finally I got an offer from Dubai. And at first I was like, I don't know, you know, I've heard so many things about the Middle East, and the salary is not that great, but in the end, I was trumped by my desire to travel, so I went, took that leap, and go. Is it beautiful over there? It's awesome, and you know, like, like I always tell people, the beauty of Dubai is is not just the. Uh, of course, there's the big buildings, there's the Burj Khalifa, and there's all this wonderful stuff. Mall of the Emirates, biggest mall in the world, but like the beauty for me was the culture because I went to Dubai expecting like me and Arabs, and then you get there, and then they have like it's like so many different cultures there. So that's what really made me smile. So I'm working with like 60 nationalities and I'm just like over the moon in joy to see like, and then of course, you know, there's the fact that Dubai is like, you have tall buildings like New York, you have beaches like the Bahamas, you have the desert, 
which is so cool. You have camels, so it's like a little bit of everything in a small place. And I just like, I love Dubai. Yeah, and, and the only reason why I bring this up is I, I'm not going to bring his name up. I know he's running this country, but I know a lot of the people that are in the real estate industry actually see a lot of Dubai and they actually, everyone praises it. So I never been there personally, but I know it's on my list to go. So I'm just like, okay, how is it? How is it? It's awesome. And whenever you go, please do send me a message. I'll give you all the, the inside scoops, where to yeah. get the discounts, where to go. Because of yeah. course there's the touristy places that you're going to go to, but I'm going to tell you like the places where you're going to get like really cool insider stuff. <laughs> Sweet. And I won't get lost over there, will I? No, you won't get lost. It's really hard to get lost in Dubai. Okay. And if you do get lost, like there's a taxi on every corner, there's Uber, so you'll be good. So it's pretty, I don't want to compare it to like Tokyo and all that, but it's, it's pretty much up in that wide open, not say wide open lifestyle, but like it's rock and yes. rolling. Yes, definitely not conservative. So I'll tell you a funny story. When I first went to Dubai, I thought that way too, because of course, you know, Dubai is in the Middle East. So I was reading articles and trying to do my research and I'm yeah. like, okay, you know, everything is telling me like, Natasha, you have to. You know, you have to wear like long sleeve shirts and the longest dress in your closet. So I left all my club attire home, Chad. I left all my skirts, <laughs> all my shorts, all my like bathing suits. Because I'm thinking like I'm going to have to be like Hail Mary for the next, you know, year or however long I was planning on staying there initially. And then I get there and then, you know, we're going out on night, a night on the town. And here I am wearing like the longest skirt in history. And like my friend is like, uh, I don't know who you think you're going with with that outfit on, but it's definitely not me. <laughs> had to go shopping, Dad. Literally had to go shopping for clothes because I thought it was super conservative. And then there's also the thing about, you know, women are treated like this and like that. And I go there. And Chad, there's a McDonald's where there's a line for ladies for ice cream cones. Literally, like a hundred dudes on the line. I'm sorry, I'm sure, like for you. No, like, you're oh, good. <laughs> but it's like a hundred guys on a line waiting for a cone, and I just walk up on the ladies' line. I'm like, "Hello, give me one of those one dollar cones, please." The metro has a ladies' area. Like most offices have ladies' areas, and anyway, like. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing to be a woman there, and it's definitely not conservative. Party, party, party. They even have ladies' night every Tuesday. That, that's, to be honest, it actually sounds like how it is up here, because obviously Wisconsin's a little more conservative, but on the other mm -hmm. side of it, it, you know, everyone's equal and no one's kind of doing it. So you go yeah. to, like, yeah, you go to, like, places around here, it's, like, ladies' night, where it's, like, mm -hmm. ladies' darts, pools, uh, yeah. dancing, yoga, you name it. I mean, I can go down pages and pages and pages of stuff. Exactly. Exactly. It's the and, same there. And or is there something else that there's, there's something you guys got, and I can't, like, my brain's not wrapping around it right now, but there's something, like, massage there's like a the, thing where you guys go to for like an hour where you like drink wine and get massages or something. I don't, I don't remember what they call it, but everyone you know, I know that like goes. Really cool they have like amazing brunches where you do that kind of stuff. Like their brunches are ridiculous, but I don't know. We just, I don't know. It's like we kind of just need like a guy one, you know, we put on. You know, oh, like a spa gear. day? Spa day. Oh, and guys do that, by the way, like. When I was work, I was working in a hotel in Dubai, and you'd be surprised about how many men come for spa days. Like, it's not like a girly thing at all. Like, men come, they get their manicures, they get their pedicures, they get their hot stone massages. They go there for them. It's beer rather than wine. They go have some beer at the pool and stuff like that. So d don't be shy, man. Chad, you can do it too. I just want to kick my feet up, be like, oh, I'm gonna enjoy this. There you go. There you go. <laughs> No, it's, I, I mean, I've had, in my lifetime, I think I've had one deep tissue massage, but it's, I haven't had any, I mean, I've been around like parties and stuff where they had penny, yeah. you know, they're running around doing pennies and all that stuff. But I don't know, it's, whenever I know the girls went that route, I kind of went to, you know, my buddy's house where it's like, you, and I'm, I'm a deer hunter. So like uh, shoot bows off the deck or, uh, what? uh, trap shoot whatever so it's like i i have a lot of the outdoors on my side so it's like one yeah when it came to that stuff it, there was like a line drawn where it's like you guys have fun i'm gonna go shoot something 
<laughs> so it's it's not like I never did it. It just I I want a different avenue when it came to that time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Totally got it. Totally got it. But go get one. Go get one sometime soon. I don't know if the if you're able to get a massage right now or your massage parlors and spas opened up. Well, maybe I just need to go on a date with a massage therapist or a massage person. That'll work. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> We'll do. We'll leave it at that term, and then we'll. Yeah, I'm not gonna say a tip wise. Up. We'll just make sure it's a good night. Shh. <laughs> I don't have explicit on this rating today. <laughs> no, this is a PG-13 show today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I say tip, that means a happy ending. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Exactly it. Kids' version of that. Uh, yeah. It's why are you smiling? I don't know. <laughs> It was a great I massage. A good day. I was just having a good day, guys. Oh, man. Now the coffee kicked in. Oh, wow. Uh, hey, I noticed on your YouTube page. Well, first of all, let's nail, let's backtrack here because coffee kicked in. Let's nail everyone with your social media, and then I'm going to answer on the uh, care part of it. So go ahead with the social media. Okay. So. The social media on everything on YouTube, on Instagram, and on Facebook is Mind Fro, as in hair, Fro Travel, which is like, you know, a play on words for mindful travel because I'm all about traveling, you know, deeper and stuff. So Mind Fro Travel on YouTube, on IG, and on Facebook. Awesome. I know on Facebook you have the I Care breakdown on the left hand side. Yes. Explain to all my listeners the breakdown of that because I'm sitting there looking I'm like that is an amazing breakdown. Yes, I care is inspire cultural awareness, respect, and empathy. And it just for every person. For every person, for every person, no matter who you are. Like it's just inspiring cult, you know, I think that. The respect and empathy factor comes from awareness because just like me i didn't know about middle eastern culture before i went there so i relied on somebody else to tell me that a middle eastern men are going to treat you bad and they're going to look down on you because of what you wear and all this stuff and that may be true for some middle easterners you know what i mean but it's not true for everybody so we should respect people and respect that it's like I can't meet one person or hear about one person and decide like every single person that, you know, fits in that same person's profile is like them. And also to be empathetic. We don't have the same mindset, all of us. So be empathetic, like put yourself in that person's shoes. They grew up in a certain way. They believe certain things. So it's just, um, you know, empathize with that and respect that. And, and that's what I preach day in and day out. Well, and I'm going to explain uh, the last one, empathy. I know that's tough for everybody. And I, I think what it is, is obviously, you know, my story earlier before yeah. we got this going. Yes. I think it's more education. And then on the other side of it, it's more love. It's, and I'm going to use this for example. Um, there's someone mm -hmm. very close to me that's been through a lot of trauma, which is causing a lot of grumbling. And it's not so much he needs X or he needs Y or whatever. It just, it's, once people understand the trauma and all that stuff that went through, then you understand why the grumbling occurred. So it's not, I don't dislike the rumbling. It's, mm -hmm. I don't agree with it, but also you got to love them for who they are. Exactly. And that's why my first letter is awareness. Because if you're not aware, if you're not educated, if you don't have insight, then it's so easy to be like, oh, this person is like this and da 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 da. But once you understand, it makes it easier to empathize. Not it, easy, but easier. And, and I'm going to use the term navigate. It's actually a lot easier to navigate with that person, too, because it's like, okay, hey, this outburst is yes. from this area. So yeah. it's once you do, especially, and you broke it down exactly, like the eye care side of it, but like once you break that down, ain't life a lot easier? It, it, it's a lot easier. And like that goes beyond culture. That's the same in relationships, like parent, son, girlfriend, boyfriend. It's the same. Like everybody has is like a culture of one kind of, whereas like you have your family life, you have your life experiences, you have all of these things that basically come together and knit together and make you who you are. And if that other person doesn't take the time to 
have awareness of you as a person and says, oh, well, I don't bite my nails, so you shouldn't either. But little do they know you bite your nails because as a child, you saw, you saw your father abusing your mother and you, you know, that's what, that's what calms you down since that time. But if they don't have that conversation with you, you'll be like, you're, how could you be 16 and biting your fingernails and never get to the root of it? And like I said, it's, it's, it's the same as culture. It's the same with from human to human, no matter what. That's why, like I said, it's all about promoting humanity. We need to be more understanding of each other on all levels. And I'm going to add my two cents in here. Everyone take the word ghosting out, you know, no ghosting, get to know someone first. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I agree, Chad, 100%. Yeah, I'm not going to use the term ghosting as much. You know where that came from. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, we're going to add that to the term of Instagram down the road here, or even like social data. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what's ghosting? That means when you get to know someone, and then all of a sudden you just completely drop and go. <laughs> and where did you go? I don't know. That's called ghosting, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, it happens a lot because of a lack of understanding. Yeah, and, and on, it's at the point where I'm at, at the point where you're at, and I'm going to say, you know, when we, hit, I'm going to use the term we, when we hit the stage where we're mm -hmm. at right now and the, the happiness with life, it doesn't really, it phases a little bit, but not for the whole whopping 5% it hurts. Mm -hmm. I'm, it, to be honest, I don't care if it occurs anymore because the way I look at it, it's like either A, it's part of your life or, you know, he brought them into your life for a reason. Yes. Or vice versa, he's taken them out of your life for a reason. So I, exactly. when you break it down that way, it's a lot more or less stressful. So it is. It takes up, gives a lot of the, I think a lot of the pain is why? Why did he leave me? Why did she do this to me? How could they? But when you just when you think about it in that vein, it makes it so that like you don't have to go through that why 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 process. It's like, you know what? May the will of the Father be done. You're out because of this. Thank you for all that you've taught me. Because every relationship teaches you something, no matter how awful that person is. Maybe they teach you how not to date other awful people, but they do teach you something. You know what I mean? Oh, I had nine years of that. I know exactly what you mean. I'm three years being single, and, and as much as people are like, oh, Chad, you need a girlfriend. I'm at a great spot. Uh, obviously, my finances aren't quite caught up to where I'm at mentally, but mentally, you got to be there first. So uh, I'm in no rush to get back in, and obviously, and I'm just going to throw my things what to do. Do not yell at your old in-laws all the time when you get to know them. Don't do that. Because That's another <laughs> um, And everyone that goes from one boyfriend to a you know, girlfriend, vice versa, find yourself first before you go back into the dating scene. I'm snapping. I'm clapping. You do <laughs> have to find yourself first. You do have to. If you don't know yourself, then you're not going to know that person, but you need that person to add to your life. So you're going to be like, asking them to do things that they can't because it's something that you have to do for you first if you don't the, love you nobody else will know how to do it yeah and then the the along with that i i kind of joking around with people when you say it this you know like people don't get i was that person where someone's like hey go find yourself go find yourself yeah and i would i would like beat my head against the wall it's like why 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 you know now being in it it's 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 a whole different story i love non-selfishly i mean obviously Mm -hmm. you know, I, I love the person I'm becoming or vice versa. Yeah. You're loving the person you're becoming. Yes. Um, I just noticed that people like date, dump, date, dump, date. And it's like a week between them. It's like, oh, girl, you didn't even dump your trash from the first one. And then someone else picks up the bag and grabs it. It's like, yeah. wow, yeah. wow, wow, I need another boyfriend. It's like, uh, why? Because you didn't settle from the first one. And now you're dragging all that drama in the second one. Yeah, like, just cut your wagon, girl. Go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have friends like that. I have friends who like they do not spend more than a week out of a relationship, and it is. I think a lot of it stems from insecurity, whether the person wants to realize that or not. It's like you need someone to show you love because you have, uh, you you don't really love yourself fully enough to spend time with yourself. You know. Yeah. So, so that's where it stems from, I think.
and it's a mindset shift. I think I was there, like, and probably not. I've never been like a person that's like, I need a boyfriend. But like, I can understand that it has to be a mindset shift because I can tell a person that, and I'm sure that you know, you have your friends too, where you're like, you can tell them and tell them and tell them, and you might as well like talk to a notepad because they're like, yeah, I totally get you, but like nothing sinks, nothing sinks. And it's because as much as you want it for them, they have to want it for themselves. And if they don't want it for themselves, there's not going to be that mindset shift. And if without that mindset shift, it's going to be boyfriend number 87 by week three. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And obviously you traveled by yourself and I went traveled. Actually, I went to Colorado. I visited family, but I traveled the whole process by myself. Nice. You know how fun it is to explore things by yourself and not having people I'm not going to use the term dragon. It's not even dragon. It's just, it's like, you just go. It's like, oh, climb this mountain. All right, cool. Let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Chad, you know, it's so funny. I just had this conversation with somebody. They were like, oh, and it changed because I went, I, after I went to Dubai, I went to China and I did a lot of solo travel in China, like to the different cities and stuff because nobody else had the time off, right? And like, I was the only like um, non-Chinese person where I worked. So I traveled alone a lot. And people are like, how can you go by yourself? It's China and da 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 But like, I totally agree with you where it's like, if I want to wake up at noon and start my day, I do that. If I want to wake up at six o'clock and go climb a mountain, I do that. If I want to go to three of the same shows, three nights in a row, guess what? I do that because it's not like, so what do you want to do? Well, what I want to do is, oh, well, actually I didn't want to do that, but let's compromise. There is no compromise because it's just a part of one. <laughs> and I love it. You go where you want, you, you you see the country or the place like in the way that you want to see it through the eyes that you want to see it. Some people go to like, I don't know, some people go to Dubai and they're like, oh my God, I want to shop. Let's go to get some gold and let's just shop, 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 shop. And I'm I'm like, let me see what this culture is like. Let me try the food. So if we go together, somebody is going to have to compromise a lot. Yeah. And that it, it's fun, but it's not fun because it's almost like it becomes a, not stress. I don't use the term stressful. It's a fun trip, but yeah, it's just, yeah. It's like you want two different things and you, yeah, the compromise kicks in. But yeah, no, it was, it was amazing. Yes. Was top of a mountain. You know how cool you just look. It's like, oh, look at this. Oh, it was awesome. No. But, I know, I can imagine. Hey, we're going to wrap this up here, but I, I want, since we went over social media again, I want, do just leave it or give us one good sentence of people can remember you with and then we'll let it go because I know we're going to be hitting the mark here pretty quick um, I know. and then either a I'm going to return and help you out on your end of it or vice versa whatever the situation is here so let's leave one leave let's use three words put three words together three words um, my three words are renew your mind, renew your mind. And if you guys that, you can't do anything else, if you guys are listening to it on podcast, but I'm just going boom, blowing my mind up here. That's awesome. Hey, love you. Thank you. And I will send me the Zoom link over and we'll rock and roll on your end. Sounds good. Pleasure chatting. Love you too, Chad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Hey guys, this is Chad here from Podcast Seas Good Degrees and our mini podcast sessions, Friday Fire. I appreciate you guys listening to both podcasts and let you know that both of these podcasts are sponsored by Beckett's of Oshkosh. For All American Diner and you're in the Oshkosh area, go visit Beckett's today. Guys, thank you for the downloads. On the other side of it here is I appreciate you guys. Go visit Apple iTunes or Spotify today. Give us a ranking. Let us know how it is and what we need to improve. Enjoy yourself. Have a great day. And see y'all next week.